Hello and welcome to another flash game making tutorial um, using ActionScript 3, the Flixel game library, and uh, Nape, a uh, physics engine. Um, so let's get started. Um, first, let's just set up a basic uh, Flixel uh, framework of what our game is going to work inside of. So if you watched the last episode, you should have this basic setup right now <laughs> here in Flash Develop. Um, so let's get started. So first, we don't need a lot of what's here. Um, you can get rid of these Flash uh, imports because Flixel will actually handle a lot of that for us. Um, and we don't need this in it because actually we will not be extending the sprite class. We are actually going to extend Flix game like that. So um, let's make main extend Flix game and we'll get rid of that and let's I believe we need to remove this void uh, on the main uh, constructor so first after the import um, let's put in this thing I don't know what this is called but it sort of initializes the flash player um, when you run the game. So we have these little brackets here and then inside we'll type SWF and some parentheses like that. And inside we're gonna tell the uh, uh, Flash player how big we are going to make our game. Um, for this tutorial we'll do a width of let's say let's just do 800 by 600 so width will be 800 so you'll write width equals and then be sure to put 800 in quotes like this then we'll put height is 600 and then we're going to do a back ground color. So background is lowercase, color is capitalized. And then we're going to put a hex triplet color in there. Uh, one uh, other cool feature about uh, Flash Develop is if you need to insert colors, if you just right click, you can do insert and then color. And it comes back with this uh, color picker. Um, and you can choose whatever color you want. You can just do black, or you can do white, or you know anything in between. And then let's do that pink, and then click that, and it gives us the hex. But actually, for this, we don't need this zero x, but we will later. So let's replace that with a pound and. Actually, I think if we just run it as it is now, it should. Oh, I have an error. So no default constructor found in base class org flixel flix game. Uh, let's see, main extends flix game. Maybe I do need the void. I hope that's a problem. <laughs> No default constructor found in base class or flexible flex game. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I know what the problem is. We can't run it just yet. Um, we need to call super. Or I hope this is what the issue is. Um, let's call super here and. Um, uh, let's run that. Okay, yeah, I believe that was the problem. So yes, it's expecting three arguments from us. 
which uh, another cool feature of Flash Develop. So it's expecting three arguments, but we don't know what it's expecting. So if we do Control Shift Space, it comes up with this handy dandy uh, hint, code hinting. So we're going to do game size, um, which is a unsigned integer. So our game size is 800 here, but actually let's put in half of that. We'll put in 400. Next, game size Y or the height, we'll put in 300. The initial state, which is going to be another flexible element that helps us change states like you know to a menu or um, uh, the uh, gameplay state or like in a role-playing game you have your world map your uh, battle screen and all that stuff but for now let's just call it a test state we're gonna make that in a second next we have our zoom um, we put in half numbers here so let's do zoom by two so we get some nice chunky pixel action going on so and that should be all that we need to oh actually let's make our test state class so go over to project we'll go to our source folder right click it and add a new class and our class will be test state test state and this is going to be based on the Flixel Flix state. So now when we click that, now we have test state. It, uh, uh, it automatically imports the Flix state for us and makes it extend Flix state. And just so we have something pretty to sort of look at, um, Oh, uh, one other thing we need to do is um, Flixel states actually will not use the default constructors. Um, we will actually override the public function. Whoops, cunching. Ooh, I'm going to have to censor that. <laughs> uh, override public function create. And that is void. And inside here, let's add, which is a Flixel thing to add a, a, fi a Flixel method, I think, to add uh, items onto the screen, like sprites and uh, various things like that. So let's add, uh, it's going to want a Flix object, a Flixel basic object. Uh, let's add a new Flix text. And you see there, it we haven't imported it yet, but it offers that. And when we click that, bam, it imports it automatically. See, Flash Develop is awesome. But um, you know what? In this, we're gonna be using a lot of things, so let's just import everything. So we're gonna ha uh, make a new Flixel text, which we'll put at zero zero and we'll make the width as wide as our game which uh, in before it's blown up it is uh, 800 by 600 so 400 wide and let's put a strength in here that says uh, hello world yes this is a hello world tutorial so anyways, uh, that should be good to go. Let's hit that and see what happens. Oh, I made a mistake. It says uh, expecting a right print before a semicolon. So I forgot a parenthesis here. I should have paid close attention. Uh, it gives you good hints. Like you see, if you click this parenthesis or that one, it shows the pair. And it even gives us a little squiggly to say something's wrong. But let's close that out. and hit play and see what happens oh there was our pink did you see it there for a second and uh, now it says hello world so we have that running so actually let's um 
change the color of that to something more personal. So inside the create, let's change the background. So I believe if you just do BG color. Oh, I'm sorry. Under the Flix G class, we have BG color. And we'll make that equal to, and remember how I said we could insert colors. Um, let's use that now. Um, we have our same color again. We'll hit OK. And now it gives us this. But there is one issue. Um, this is a color in RGB. So we have red is F5, green is 29, and blue is 85. But actually, we need AARGB. So we need an alpha in there. So uh, for alpha to be completely opaque so that we can see it, we're going to add two more Fs at the beginning. So we have alpha, red, green, blue. And when we run it, it should still have our pink. Uh, build failed. What's going on? Build started. OK, there we go. Mm, pink. Hot pink. Uh, so yeah, there we have a basic Flixel game running. And actually, um, um, this is things that I've learned from using Flixel a bit, but particularly from Flash Game Dojo. So let's go there now. If we just go to the Flixel page. Okay, so here we're at flashgamedojo.com. Um, it's actually, you know, I'm not sure if it's really being updated so much lately. I think the two creators of it are busy with other things, but it still has lots of great information on it, um, particularly the code snippets on how to use Flash and Flashpunk, which is another game library that is pretty good. Um, I think it is, I, I'm told that it's better for people who are more into programming, whereas Flixel is better for people who are more artistically inclined and just want to get things in as easy as possible. Whereas Flashpunk, maybe there's a little bit more of a hurdle to get things running, but if you want to do more program programmatic things, it's a little bit easier to uh, uh, customize, I suppose. Um, so yes, in here we can just click the Flixel button and it'll show us all the Flixel articles. And I pretty much just did the Hello World tutorial uh, for Flash Develop, which has all the information here. Actually, maybe I should have just pointed you guys here rather than uh, uh, <laughs> making my own tutorial. <laughs> all right, so. That's it for making a basic Flixel game. Uh, so let's get Nape involved in all this.